Well, when I went to pick up my mail this morning, there was a big surprise there. It was a box that I wasn't expecting, and it has my new book in it. I'm really excited to show that to you. Before I do, though, I just wanted to tell you exactly how this whole thing came about. The reason I'm doing it is because if you ever thought that you wanted to do something and thought that you couldn't do it, you probably can do it. I had always thought about writing a book, but I didn't really know how to get from point A to point B. And I didn't even really know what the book would be about. I actually thought it would be about something spiritual because I have a very deep interest and love for spirituality. But that's not what the book is about. The way the whole thing happened is kind of happened on its own. I did take a step in the direction, but I didn't really orchestrate any of the details. Everything kind of unfolded for me. I use a product that I really love called Fast Diffuse. It's an interfacing that I use in my artwork, and I just love it. Every time I use that product, I would think to myself, oh my gosh, I should write a book about this. I love this product. But I never really thought, oh, I really want to write a book about this product. I, I just loved the product, and I used it all the time, and I made beautiful things out of it. So several years ago, I was in a show in Katuit at the Cahoon Museum. And I didn't know, but someone named Sally Maver was in that show. I was a huge admirer of Sally's. She's an amazing artist, and I felt incredibly honored to be in a show with her. I met her during the opening, which is when I found out that she was in the show. I didn't even know. And I had a nice conversation with her, and she was incredibly generous with her time. And she had written a book for C&T Publishing, and I had her book, and I always wanted to meet her, so it was really exciting for me. So... When we were talking, I had told her about my idea. I had two ideas, but she suggested that I just contact the publisher directly. Now, in another life, I was an illustrator many, many years ago, and I remember the publishers telling us, please do not contact us. Don't call us. <laughs> Submit your work according to submissions guidelines. Please do not waste our time. So I was very reluctant to contact the publisher out of the blue because I remembered that. Still, I when I looked at the submissions guidelines, they were so involved, you really had to know everything about the book. And I didn't even know if they would be interested because there were several books that had already been written using that product. So I took her suggestion. I sent an email to the publisher with some photos of some of the things I had made, and I sent them to the publisher. And much to my surprise, they emailed me back right away and said, we would love it if you wrote a book. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. The door swung wide open. Well, it seemed like it swung open, but it kind of really didn't because when I looked at the kind of logistics of writing the book, the financial aspect and the time it would involve, I realized that it really wasn't going to be realistic for me. And I remember thinking, hmm, I guess it wasn't really meant to be, you know, because the doors really didn't swing wide open. And that was in January a couple of years ago. And I kind of forgot about the book because in March, the pandemic started and all of my work got shut down and 
you know, I wasn't really sure. I knew things would work out, but I wasn't sure how. And someone had told me that they might be giving um, unemployment to people that were self-employed, which is me. And I, although I didn't believe that we would get it because we don't usually get any kind of benefits like that, I did go ahead and follow through and apply for that. And I did get it, much to my surprise. And I forgot all about the book because, you know, all this was going on and I didn't know what the heck was going to happen. And I, that was the last thing on my mind. Well, in May, I got an email from the publisher telling me that they were still interested in having me write the book. And I thought, oh my gosh, the book. I have all this free time. I'm getting paid. I could do that now. So I was so excited, you know, when I signed the contract until I realized I had to write a book. <laughs> and then I thought, how in the world am I going to write a book? I not only have trouble reading, I'm not a writer, I'm an artist, and I know how to do something very well, but I don't know how to write a book. I didn't tell the publisher that. But I knew that the way the whole thing came together, that I would probably be shown how to do it is the only way I can explain it. And that is really what happened. You know, I, I got the answers that I needed to take every next step. And at first I was very overwhelmed because I just didn't know how it would all happen. But I just started where I could, and then every step of the way, I was given the answers that I needed to get to the next step. And here it is, a year later, and much to my surprise, you know, here is my book. It's unbelievable. Tiny Worlds in Fabric. It's so exciting. So um, the reason I'm telling you all this is because if you have a desire that's honest, you will be shown the way, but you have to take the first step. It's not going to drop in your lap, but it might after you take the first step. But I think a lot of people talk themselves out of it because they don't see how it's going to happen. And I didn't really understand how it would happen. But, you know, when Sally suggested that I contact the publisher, I just did that. And after that, everything kind of unfolded. So... I want to encourage anybody that might have listened all the way to the end of this recording, I wanted to encourage you to take that first step if you have an honest desire because you might be very surprised where it will lead you. And I hope you buy my book. It's the best book that was ever written.